Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com and this is Trading Places Live. It is Wednesday, September 9th, 2020 and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for Thursday, September 10th. Futures are currently higher. We had a really strong day on Wednesday and market at least uh, for now appears as though we'll have a decent open tomorrow. A lot can change overnight so we'll see what happens in the morning but at least currently does look like maybe we'll get a little bit of follow through tomorrow. We'll see. Um, gonna go through um, the agenda, just uh, let you know some of the things we're gonna talk about in the show today. Gonna start off with the uh, uh, daily market recap as we always do, and then get into talking technically. I wanna just pull up more of a refresher, but uh, looking at some of the 60 minute charts, look at the IWF versus the IWD, uh, also, uh, want to go back into that Trading Places blog article that I published about a week ago, talking about the sentiment issues, the big warning, um, and I'm going to bring up updated charts so we can take a look at those. Then I'm going to go into break it down. Uh, in this segment, I like to take a sector and then just kind of walk you through how I would look at the sector uh, in terms of finding top industry groups and then finding stocks within those industry groups that I might consider trading. Then we'll go to uh, earning spotlight. Got a few companies that uh, reported after hours tonight and uh, some other, a uh, few pretty big ones coming up on Thursday after the market closes. So we'll go through, talk about some of those and then we will wrap up with the three you must see. Uh, before we get into any all of that, I do wanna just point out, if you go over to earningsbeats.com, you can subscribe to the free Earnings Beats Digest newsletter comes out uh, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning, normally before the market opens, and uh, just covers a lot of the topics that we address at Earnings Beat. So a lot of relative strength uh, topics, um, earnings, gaps, um, even had one a week or so ago about the S&P 500, how far I thought we might drop, and that was back when the S&P was at its high, and uh, we nearly hit that, uh, that target. So just some good information I think that will help in your trading and uh, in your investing as well. So go to earningsbeats.com, make sure you sign up. Name and email address, that's all it takes. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, there's uh, no credit card required and you can unsubscribe at any time. All right, let's move on to the daily market recap. I wanted to go through and just uh, highlight some of what happened on Wednesday. Good news is, we saw the Dow Jones Industrial Average rebound 440 points, the S&P 67 points, NASDAQ almost 300 points, and on a relative basis, you can see 2.7% gain in the NASDAQ. So the NASDAQ was the relative leader, which was nice to see. Mid caps, small caps, both up, but both lagged the NASDAQ and lagged both the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones. As far as sectors go, all 11 sectors were higher on Wednesday. So that was good. Uh, it wasn't you know, just a couple of groups leading the market. It was actually every group moving to the upside. Technology was the big winner. Of course, this is the group that's been beaten up pretty good over the past week or so. But the XLK rose 3.26%. Materials also having a strong day. We saw the dollar pull back just a little bit. I think that helped to uh, send traders in the direction of materials. XLB up two and a half percent, a little over that. Discretionary up almost 2%. Healthcare about one and three quarters percent. Industrials, one and a half percent. So all of these groups really strong. Um, and when you look at the accumulation distribution lines under each of them, I think they're all pretty strong. Healthcare is pulled back just a little bit here in September. Same with the industrials, but really not much on the other groups. So I think uh, the market continues to be very strong. And after we get through this patch of selling, consolidation, basing, whatever you want to call it, I do think the market goes higher in the fourth quarter. 10-year Treasury yield uh, rose on Wednesday. So that means money was rotating out of Treasuries, which is good for equities. And it was again today. Uh, the 10-year Treasury yield rose about two basis points, 0.70% was the close. And we'll see whether or not we can continue this strength to get back through 0.75%, which was the high toward the end of August. If we do, I think there's a chance that we're going to make a run for about 0 uh, 0.9, 0 0.95 to test that June high. And if that occurs, we will see probably quite a bit of rotation away from 
uh, the bond market in, into the stock market. So maybe that happens later in September, maybe even into October. But for now, I would just watch the support area around 0.62% and resistance about 0.75%. All right, as far as economic reports on Thursday, we do have the initial jobless claims due out at 8.30. Uh, market's looking for 828,000. Last week, 881,000. So we are heading in the right direction. Market is anticipating a slight drop from last week. Then we'll get August PPI and core PPI out tomorrow morning as well. Both are expected to come in with a rise of about two tenths of 1%. And both of those would be substantially lower than what we saw in July. The July PPI was uh, a rise of 0.6%. And in terms of core PPI, the rise was 0.5%. So both of those numbers expected to drop back to 0.2%. We'll see in the morning. July wholesale inventories. Uh, expectation is for a drop of one-tenth of 1%. June, we saw a drop of 1.4%. So uh, it does look like wholesale inventories will hold fairly flat. Uh, in July versus June. Uh, let's see, how about we move into talking technically, and I wanna pull up some 60 minute charts uh, to get you going here. Now the Dow Jones Industrial Average, first thing I was looking for was to get through the 20, out, excuse me, the 20, yeah, 20 hour EMA. So we did make that move, had a nice gap up on Wednesday, uh, continued moving up throughout the entire day, went through the 20 hour, never got the, um, hourly PPO back above the center line, but we did uh, rally at least temporarily. And then the final hour, you can see a sell off of about 250 points in that final 60 minutes. And uh, that took us back below that 20 hour EMA. Pulling up the S&P 500, same thing, gap up, traded pretty nicely, not quite as strong as the Dow, but pretty good. Um, and then fell into a uh, uh, that final hour of selling, and we went back down, closed below that 20 hour. The NASDAQ, I'm just gonna jump into the NASDAQ 100, but you can see a couple of times during the day tried to get through the 20 hour EMA, could not do it, closed below it, although the sell off at the end of the day was not nearly as strong on the NASDAQ 100 as it was on the Dow or the S&P 500. But all of it came on volume. We did see some volume, a lot of volume selling in the last hour. And that could just continue to make it somewhat dicey for the market in the uh, near to intermediate term. When I say near to intermediate term, I'm talking about this month. Um, for some people, that maybe isn't that near term. Um, a lot of day traders are thinking uh, toward the end of the month, that's uh, light years away. Uh, but if you're somebody who's a buy and hold, then you know looking out over the next month really uh, doesn't matter that much. And I do think over time, you know, once we get into the fourth quarter, I think what we're seeing right now will be behind us. Just my own personal opinion. I believe we're in a secular bull market, but even a secular bull market needs uh, corrections and basing periods occasionally to set the stage for the next breakout and the next move to the upside. All right, let's pull up the IWF versus the IWD. This is the iShares Russell 1000 growth ETF versus the iShares Russell 1000 value ETF. And if we look back, and this is a chart of the last five months, so this takes us all the way back to about the second week of April. <clears throat> if you look at this, I mean, obviously the trend is going up from left to right. So just in a nutshell, the uh, growth stocks are definitely in favor and have been over the last five months. But we go through periods where growth stocks make these big leaps versus value. We've seen many of them. And then it's followed by weakness where money rotates back into value for a period of time. And we've seen, you know, up to three weeks. Saw this back in May, middle of May through the first week of June, about a three, uh, excuse me, three week period right there. Growth stocks were clearly out of favor versus the value stocks. But then went on about a five week tear to the upside. Then about two, two and a half weeks, we saw growth underperform again, little consolidation, and then another tear to the upside. And once again now, we're seeing this pullback. So we're in one of these pullback phases, but still within the confines of a longer term uptrend. So I believe growth remains in favor longer term, 
even though in the short term, you certainly could see that value is uh, what uh, traders are looking at right now. Okay, um, moving on to my blog article. And this was an article that I wrote back on September 3rd. So this would have been, um, what's that? That would have been last Thursday before the open. And um, so literally a week ago. And I was really trying to stress caution for anyone who's trading, short-term traders. The uh, longer term, I mean, if you're buy and hold, this doesn't matter. These periods of uh, fluctuations up and down, the reason they don't matter for a long-term um, investor <clears throat> is that, um, hold on one second. <clears throat> The reason they don't matter for a longer term investor is that if you get out looking to get back in, I mean, if you know for sure that the market's gonna pull back, then sure, you could sell your holdings, wait a week and jump in at a lower price. That would be great. But as a long-term buy and holder, what do you do if you get out and the market simply ignores the warning signs? That happens sometimes. This isn't a guarantee. I, I stated in the article back then that this was a, you know, I believed it was prudent in order to manage risk to consider these uh, sentiment readings as possible warning signs. And I was building cash. I did build cash and I've been trying to reinvest that, some of it anyway, as the market has sold off. But um, from a longer term tr uh, buy and hold standpoint, if you get out and the market keeps going up, then what do you do? Then you're left with a really difficult decision. Do you buy back in at higher prices? Because that, you know, just emotionally that can take a toll on you if you're normally somebody who just doesn't want to pay attention to the market. So I really clarified in this article that I was looking at short term. This is for traders, not for those who like to just buy and hold. So what was going on? Well, volatility and the S&P 500 were going up together, completely opposite of what we normally see. Normally, the S&P goes up, the VIX goes down or the S&P goes down, the VIX goes up. And if you look at the correlation between these two over the last five years, you can see most of the time we're down near minus one, which is a completely inverse relationship, totally inverse. Minus one means one's going up, the other's going down. And that's typically what happens with this, uh, you know, with the VIX and the S&P 500. But sometimes the market goes up and, the, and it, we start to see a little bit of fear creep into the market. And that's the beauty of this correlation, looking at the VIX versus the S&P 500. And here is your correlation of the two. And what I pointed out back on September 3rd, you can see it. This was the highest reading we saw in the last five years in terms of positive correlation. So the S&P, you can see it, S&P was just rolling straight up. But look at the VIX, the five-day moving average of the VIX was also rising. This isn't just the VIX, it's the five day moving average. So it takes a little while to get this to turn back to the upside. So when you look at this, there was no doubt that the market was getting more fearful. And when the market gets more fearful, you've gotta be careful because it doesn't handle bad news or it doesn't handle selling very well when the market's nervous. When the market's nervous and the selling starts, everyone sells. It just, it's like the tip of the iceberg, um, the analogy I use sometimes is that that snowball going over the mountain and starting to pick up speed to the downside. And that's exactly what happened. If we pull this up and take a look at where we are now, the VIX is still going up. The five day moving average is going up, but now the S and P is going down. So what's happening? We're seeing this positive correlation start to move lower. And if you go back and you look at all of these spikes in correlation that go into positive territory after it's over, we go right back. I mean, this is what the market normally does. We have the inverse relationship. So I think it's really important just to note that, you know, I think now, you know, what's going to happen is we're going to see as the S&P goes down, VIX goes up. But as soon as the S&P gets its footing and starts moving back to the upside, you're going to see this start to turn back around. I do not believe we are going to see the five-day moving average of the VIX take out what we saw back in June. I don't think that's going to happen. I'd be very surprised. I don't think it's going to last that long. Um, we might tre trek a little bit higher, maybe get up 32 and a half or something like that. I don't believe we're going to get up to 35, 36. Just my opinion. 
All right. Um, also, in that same article, I wrote about the put call ratio. And anytime the put call ratio is going lower and lower, this is a five day moving average of the put call ratio, got down to 0 0.41, which essentially tied the June low. And that was the lowest we had had in the last five years by far. And a low put call ratio means that there aren't as many puts versus calls. I mean, it's a numerator denominator. Puts are on the numerator, calls are in the denominator. So as this number gets lower and lower, it means that more calls are being traded versus puts. And of course, those who are buying calls are very optimistic about the market. And when you get the masses all going in one way, one direction, then that's normally when we get a reversal. And so what happened? Well, we had the S&P up at 3,600. We came all the way back down close to 3,300. Let's look at the update on this chart. Look at the, now all of a sudden the market's selling off and we're starting to go back to normal where more puts are being bought versus calls. So it's really important to follow these sentiment indicators because they do many times highlight reversals before the reversals happen. I mean, if you look at these red circles, Look at when we started to get all of these numbers. And I would say, you know, 0 0.55 on a five-day moving average. When you get below 0 0.55, you're starting to move into territory where it's, the market is just getting too bullish. And if you look back, you know, these circles don't highlight that a long-term bear market's coming. I mean, we did get the pandemic back in February, late February and into March, but we didn't know that was coming. What it normally tells us is just that the market is ripe for a period of selling or basing. And each one of these times you can see, you know, the extent of the selling has been different, but we've had a sell-off every time. Even this one, which was very minor, probably went back 1% or something, but we did have a little bit of a selling, a sell-off. But these others, uh, we had some pretty significant selling, including uh, this past week. So we always want to be careful and um, recognize when these storm clouds are brewing. And that's, that's the analogy I use with sentiment is, you know, when we get to extreme levels, it's just telling me that there are some really nasty clouds on the horizon. Um, I've seen times before where it doesn't, doesn't amount to a storm, but it could become a very serious storm. And that's why as a short-term trader, you've got to be aware because you, we've seen how fast the market sold off. That's the thing. The market doesn't go back down slowly the way it goes up. The market goes back down very, very rapidly. All right, uh, let's keep moving on. Break it down. I'm going to go into the industrials and I want to just show you a few things. So the first thing I wanted to point out is the, I always look at the industry groups on a relative basis to the S&P 500. So I have a chart list that has all of the industry groups in it. Um, and what I do is I pull them up on a three-year weekly chart relative to the S&P 500, just so I can visualize where the money is going or where it's not going. And so if we start with just the industrials, since we're going to uh, break it down on the industrials, let me just go through this pretty quickly, these, these different charts. But this is not uh, the absolute chart of waste and disposal services. This is a chart of waste and disposal services relative to the S&P 500. So we know the market's been going up. And in fact, if you look at, this is an absolute chart down here on the bottom. You can see that waste and disposal services has been going up since March. So it's not like the group has been going down. It's going up, but on a relative basis to the S&P, it's going down. So it's not going up as much as the S&P 500. That's important because if you want to beat the S&P 500, you want to be in areas that are, that's beating the S&P 500. I think that hopefully makes sense. It should be common sense. And so waste and disposal services, that's a no for me. Trucking, absolutely a yes. So here's trucking relative to the S&P. Looks awesome. Uh, business support services, above the 20-week moving average, which is above the 50. That looks good. Uh, and then we go into diversified industrials. No way, not interested. Industrial suppliers did break down below the 20 here recently, but this is a group that's been pretty strong. I think we, you know, I'd like to see it hold this prior relative low. So it's okay. It's not one of my favorite groups because of the weakness it's seen over the last six weeks, but it's not bad. Uh, 
Defense continues to hover near its three-year relative low. Can't uh, suggest defense stocks yet. Heavy construction, pretty much it still remains in this downtrend on a relative basis. Transportation services, I still am looking at a relative downtrend. Industrial machinery, been pretty strong on a relative basis last five or six months, but we still got overhead uh, resistance, relative re resistance to negotiate. Railroads, I think, are really improving. I like this relative breakout back into positive territory through that center line. So that's one positive. Watch this triple top right here, triple relative top. We're on our way up. If we get that breakout, I think railroads become a much stronger area of the market. Marine transportation, horrible relative to the S&P. Stay away. Uh, building materials and fixtures, pretty strong. You can see this move through the zero line. Now we're up at uh, positive two. We're above the 20, which is crossed above the 50. This is a nice configuration, and we're definitely seeing more and more strength there. Aerospace, no way. Still down near 52-week low. That includes Boeing. Many of those stocks, just not interested. Commercial vehicles and trucks starting to strengthen, getting that 20 to cross over the 50. This is the highest the uh, relative PPO has been since all the way back in probably the first quarter of 2018. So two and a half years later, uh, we're seeing a lot of strength here in this group picking up. So this is a group I would uh, certainly be interested in. Um, delivery services, wow, huge move up the past few months. Clearly one of the leaders. Airlines, no thank you. Recently, last five weeks or so, we've, we've been seeing a little relative strength, but I still think the longer term points lower. I don't trust these short term uh, moves to the upside in terms of relative strength. And then that's it. So I went through all those groups. I would say, you know, as I look through, I would say um, trucking is one that I would be interested in. Um, certainly uh, the delivery services. Um, let me pull up that business support services group. Look at this one more time. Yeah, we got uh, almost like a move up cup and a little handle, a little relative handle. Breakout would be very strong. This is a group I'm going to demonstrate and show you I, how I would go from here to individual stocks. So once you look at an industry, or excuse me, a sector, Break it down, look at the industry groups, find the areas of that sector that are strong, and then pick out some of those industry groups that are strong, and then go to your dashboard. So business support services is what I'm going to look at. And one way, easy way to do this is to pull up the scooter reports, which is under summary pages over here under the member tools. And if you pull up scooter reports, it's going to bring up all the large cap in scooter order but I'm gonna type in here business support services. Okay, so here they are in scooter order. This is where I would start. I mean, uh, among the, the top names, uh, United Rentals and Cintas both have scooters 80 or above. United Rentals, 98. Um, if we go to mid cap business support services, you can again see from a scooter perspective where the strength is. Ritchie Brothers Auctioneers, TTEC Holdings. And then small caps, same thing. Here we got six names, uh, 80 and above. And you can see the volume, like the top one there, only 89,000 shares traded. I probably wouldn't even look at that. I'd, I like to see more volume. But we have plenty in here. It's got uh, some uh, really strong volume. I can tell you PGEN, which is now has a scooter of 90, it's a heavily shorted stock. Um, stock has pulled back sitting on its 50 day moving average, but it's in an uptrend. We'll see. I wouldn't want to give it too much room to the downside. Sometimes these stocks are heavily shorted for a reason, but, uh, since that March low, this is a stock that has certainly gotten a lot better. And, uh, if it bounces off that 50 could easily get back up to six, six and a quarter, which would, uh, represent probably, I don't know, maybe 25 to 30% gain. Um, uh, but anyway, that's the way I would go through. Uh, next up, let's take a look at some earnings reports. So earnings spotlight. And uh, one thing I want to do here is just pull up, you know, just about every earnings report I see these days, we're getting stronger than expected numbers, uh, especially on the bottom line. Earnings tend to be beating almost every time. Uh, but that doesn't always mean that we're going to uh, move higher. Wall Street doesn't always give us 
uh, a positive reaction. So the first one I wanted to pull up here is Zscaler. So this is in software. Software was pretty good today. Zscaler bouncing off its 50 day moving average. Nice little uptrend. You probably could connect from these lows coming across here. Nice little trend line. Um, I think the stock looks good. The recent low down around 126, 127 should offer up some pretty good support. 50 day moving average at 128. The stock did beat um, in terms of its earnings. I'll give you those numbers. Let's see, uh, Zscaler uh, came in at five cents profit with five cents per share. Uh, the market was expecting three cents per share and the stock was up you know, about one third of 1%. So not a whole lot of movement after hours. Next up is RH. So let me pull that chart up for you. Um, RH, now this stock is up 14% after hours, uh, 360.650. So really nice move. And this is, I mean, this is really what I look for. If you look across, when, it, when we put our portfolios together at earnings beats, I mean, it's this right here. I mean, it's moving up left to right. The group, home improvement retailers, strong. The stock relative to its peers, strong. Relative to the S&P, strong. And home improvement relative to the S&P, strong. So good stock, leading stock in a leading group. I'm not shocked to see the stock up 14% with earnings. Again, doesn't mean that, you know, just because you see all of these relative strength lines, it doesn't guarantee you're going to get a big pop. But I do think that it tells you that you can expect a pretty good report. Um, and so we definitely saw that on RH. Came out with the earnings per share of $4.90. Market was expecting $3.44. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, just maybe time for one or two more. Uh, let me look at GME, the most heavily shorted stock in the market. Did not like this candle today heading into earnings. And the stock did beat, but not by a lot, a buck 27 loss. Market was expecting a buck 40 loss. So it did beat by 13 cents. But after hours, last time I looked, stock was getting hit pretty good. Uh, yeah, it's down about 11% after hours. Closed at 735. Last trade, 655. So not particularly strong there. Uh, a couple other... Uh, companies I wanted to mention, they will be reporting on Thursday after the close, Oracle, Chewy, and Peloton. So here's Oracle, uh, Chewy. Chewy's been pretty strong, nice little uh, new breakout on the uh, stock versus specialty retailers. So that's a good, uh, I think a pretty good sign. And Peloton has been one of the best stocks in the market and been rising on volume. So I would really be expecting a big report there. All right, three you must see. Going to wrap this up pretty quickly. Let's start off with Cisco, the food company. SYY, um, I like what's going on here with the accumulation distribution after trending lower all the way until the end of July. Now with this latest push, we're seeing it move up. Nice volume on these uh, big moves to the upside. Overall, I think uh, uh, Cisco is starting to look pretty good here. Again, Cisco, the food company. DLTR, this is Dollar Tree. Just wanted to point out this reversing candle. Came at about this area of support, around $90. So I like that. I think we have a chance off of that reversal to head back up, test the moving averages just above 95. And then we're going to wrap this thing up with CARR. This one I'm a little nervous because of as we move higher, you can see the AD line starting to roll over. And also, I believe if I... Uh, yeah, as we moved higher, you can see, look at the PPO falling. So I wouldn't be surprised. I like the stock. Uh, this has actually been a pretty good leader, but I think we could get the PPO at center line. I think price could move back to the 50-day. Uh, I'd probably be a little patient here on this one. All right, that's it for today. I want to thank you for tuning in. I'll be back on Monday at Earnings Beats with your next Trading Places Live. Happy trading, everybody. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.